So what's in a name? Take, for instance, my name, Arthur Procaro. I'm named after my paternal grandfather. I'm Italian. And in fact, Arthur, being an Italian, when he married an Irish immigrant, he was shunned by his family. So in fact, a name can tell us quite a lot about a person. We're not talking about me today. Hopefully we're getting to know somebody better. Augustine, St. Augustine and his confessions. Augustine, named by his mother and father, by Patricius de Monica, after Augustine, the Roman Empire. Pretentious. They wanted to have a little emperor. Well, Augustine probably didn't live that part of the dream of his parents. In the topic that we're delving into, I hope you'll enjoy and encouraging you to consider reading in detail and reflecting on as a person, the confessions, the confessions of St. Augustine, uh, known for over 16 centuries now by so many people of such different cultures, people who picked it up, students and professors, housewives and merchants, people pick it up curious confessions. He's going to talk about himself, his peccadilloes, his difficulties. The It's titillating. And if we understand what's in the name, confession for Augustine is not a private act in which I tell my sins to God. Confession for Augustine in that time and for us today has at least three meanings. But Basically, it's understood as, as a witness. I give confession to my faith. It's a testimony. And this is a personal testimony of a person, a real live human being, Augustine, who writes, and what he's writing, he's writing to God. And he knows other people are listening in. He's writing it also so that other people can see his relationship with God, his experience of God. And his confession is a confession of, yes, sinfulness, that he, without God, he's lost. But it's also a confession of, of faith. He believes in God. He knows God, has an experience of God, and that experience is what he wants to share, his confession, his testimony, his witness. And also, besides being a testimony, a confession of sin, a confession of faith, it's a confession of praise. Augustine is praising God for what God can do when we allow God to do it, to realize that it is God working in us, God working with us, that allows us to be all that we are challenged to be, image and likeness of God. So, address to God a song of praise, a song of thanksgiving, a song of the mercy of God's love, of God's acting in our life, within us, within you and I. So why was this written? Why did Augustine take time, energy, expense to write about this relationship with God? The basic topic, the basic concept that Augustine is trying to, to communicate to us today, 16 centuries later, is that of, of conversion, of turning to God, of turning back to God. When Augustine reflects on this, he realizes God has never left him. God never leaves us alone. God is with us. Many times we walk away. Many times we are not aware of, we leave God to the side, but God is always there. God is with us, God is for us, God is working in us. So turn back to God. That's why he wrote this, to share that experience and encourage others that all that distracted him from God, all that took him away from real happiness and fulfillment in this life, he hopes to help others, you and I today, all these years later, to avoid, to overcome, to follow the same path. 
to recognize God present in our lives. And that's what we have this opportunity, to reflect together, hope for you the opportunity to reflect on, on your life and, and do as Augustine did. Put yourself before God and share it with, with others as well. Your confession of praise, your, your song of the mercy of God. Share your experience with others. How was this written? This is a particularly interesting question. I mean, you have the internet and uh, the cursive method even for writing is in question. People use a keyboard. At uh, the time of Augustine, obviously, this did not exist. In fact, Augustine would dictate and would have two or three scribes would naturally have to be paid. Each one would take a paragraph, they follow up with another paragraph, the following person. So they take by turns and they transcribe what they heard Augustine dictate. And think of it, in order to do that, they had to invest in making the ink. They had to invest in making the parchment. So it was done intentionally, done for a, a specific reason that Augustine felt was worth it. He wanted to communicate to others, to share his experience of God with others, to share his conversion and the reasons for giving thanks to God, to demonstrate his gratitude with others. And that's still going on all these years later. How this particular writing, as many of the others of Augustine from that time period, came to us, they were treasured so much. Augustine, who was born in northern Africa in the year 354 and died in the year 430, we have so many of his writings today. And we have this book, The Confessions, which I encourage you to, to take a look at. It. Grab your own copy or look at it on the internet and find the ability to, to read along, to discover as we go along book by book. There are 13 books in the Confessions, and this was written in the year 397, more or less. So Augustine had already converted and been baptized 10 years before this. 10 years before this, in Milan, with the hands of the Bishop Ambrose, along with good friends and his son, Adeodatus, baptized to begin a journey of faith, a journey in which he shared his experience and listened to the experience of others, share an experience of how we can help one another find true happiness through community life. So this was when it was written, 10 years after his baptism, six years after he was ordained a, a priest in the Diocese of Hippo in Africa, a diocese he went to to look for a friend and was chosen and, and made priest. And it was written merely a year after he was made bishop, the bishop of that diocese, which he served for close to 40 years before passing away. So the Augustine's experience of life, but not an autobiography. He's not relating to us dates and facts. Rather, he's recalling, sharing from his memory those significant events which spoke to him of God, which allowed him to discover God in his life. Those significant events, uh, similar to much of what goes on in our own time, that maybe can help us if we learn to see and discover God in ourselves and in our history, in our life, the story of a journey and his memory of moments in that journey. Not an autobiography, yet not a work of fiction. This is true. This is how his memory, how he experienced his life. As a student, he studied because he and his parents wanted him to get ahead to have a better life. And better meant wealthy, comfortable, secure. But so many others were not. So today, uh, as well, we live in a state of inequality a great disparity between those few who are rich and the, m and the many, many who are poor. But Augustine lived that. And lived also in a society that had, 
had slaves and misused people, treated people as though they were objects and not children of God, migrants who were mistreated, strangers who were abandoned, who suffered in hunger and homelessness. So many of the issues which we face were faced by Augustine and down through the centuries, 1600 years of experience when this particular writing, the Confessions, has spoken to so many people, has helped them on their journey, helped them to discover God in their lives. So 13 books, and hopefully we'll be able to follow along this together, book by book, uh, and each book as I present it, I'll try to present it with some of the, the marvelous, outstanding quotes, those sayings that capture Augustine's spirit and his relationship to God. Just for instance, in the very first paragraph of the first book, Augustine says, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. The restless heart of Augustine echoes into throughout the centuries, into so many people's lives, searching for happiness, searching for wholeness, searching for holiness, to become fully alive. And Augustine sharing his experience of that. The many t opportunities as you go along, as we do this, I'll point out spontaneous prayer, which just bursts from his heart. The restless heart as it draws close to God, the spontaneous prayer which helps him express a confession of gratitude to God for what God is working in and through him. So the spontaneous prayer, particular situations, famous quote, things that hopefully you'll be able to identify with and will, find, will nurture you in your journey as we take this journey together. We try to discover together more about who we are before God. Let me encourage you, please, not only to get your copy and, and, and read at least parts of the of these 13 books of the Confessions of St. Augustine, but try to share your experience with, with those you care about. Share, share your, what Augustine has said to you, what God has said to you through Augustine, what you hear God saying to you today. But make it a, an experience of community for you yourself, as I will try to do. I look forward to the journey together.